we finished the first part, so now I'm gonna move on to the second part. So on okay. this screen, after you're done with the first shop, what you can do is you can scan using the barcode of the setup sheet, or you can manually come here, touch, and open up the program by by choosing the appropriate folder as well. So this uh, this is a program, maybe this is a part that you run fairly often at your fabrication shop. Yes. And it's already in there and you just go right to it. Exactly, yeah. sir. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hit the escape button so the BI and the package will move to a safe position. Okay. Okay, they're headed for home. Mm -hmm. now, now, all three criteria are on green light. We will hit start and okay. hit the button. This time it's gonna take two minutes and 30 seconds, but- But it has to clean up what it made already, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. So this two minute and 30 seconds include cleaning everything and then cleaning up a new gotcha. program. So everything, after every job like this, those uh, those punches and dies are put back into their place mm -hmm. exactly where they should be. Exactly, the same rack and same location. And then we start again with the next job. Yeah, yes. But gotcha. Yeah, if our, if our second job will have contains a common tools that's already on the bed, yeah. it will not put the tools back. It will just use, just move the part on the bed. Oh, I see. Tools on okay, yeah. To reduce some time as well. Yeah. yeah I saw it pick those parts, uh, those uh, narrow... Uh, yes, the ear punches. Narrow dies there out of the... Oh, yes. And the same thing with the punches, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we will be using those parts again. Oh, this time we will be using a gooseneck and what you will see is you will see a gooseneck punch facing forward you and one reverse as well. Oh, I see, okay. You know what, I'm gonna take a look in here while it's doing its job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's something cool about watching this. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. I like it as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, again, if I was a uh, math producing the first part, I would use this two minute and 30 seconds to bring the finished part to the different yeah. locations. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. And that we see here is the reverse gooseneck that's going to be installed. Oh, I see. Okay. It's kind of hard to see from here, but it's kind of rotating in the APC right now to reverse it. Ah, it was up, up on top, right? Yes. Okay, so here it comes. And for the tools, um, totally this, different setup. Here. Yes, this time we're using the gooseneck punches, mm -hmm. but um, all our punches will have a same height. So even if we have multiple stages, we can have one stage that has a gooseneck, one stage that has a standard straight sash. I forgot what, does not what, matter. what you call that. It's a feature of your dies, but... Uh, it's the CSH tool. Or I mean uh, punches, yeah. yeah. It's a common tool, common tool height. Common tool oh, height, common right. Shot height, sorry. Yeah. Common okay. shot height tools. And same with the die as well. The pressure point will yeah. be the same, so we can have a V8 next to a V12 or 14 as well. Okay, gotcha. Good, okay. So that was our second setup. Like we did, I'm gonna go to run screen and hit start. Once I hit start, the back cage, the monitor, and the foot pedal will move to the location that I should be. And I can see, I can check how I'm gonna be gauging the part using the back cage monitor or on this 3D mode. Okay. So if I see the screen, it lines up here. So. Bend it. That's the first wow. And you'll see it move. And you'll see the bend in the oh, yeah. does the adjustments. Wow. That's the final angle. Yep. Because I have the side flange over here. 
I know where exactly I have to put the part. <laughs> and again? Here as well. Okay, so those, hmm? those back gauge fingers yes. move before every bend if they have to. Exactly, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So by the time when the operator presents the part to the machine, the back gauge it's is already, already there. ready for it. Yes. Yeah. And our last bend. So for our demo parts, do not put any angle adjustments at the beginning. Yeah. And we we kind of like to let the customer see this part because we because using the bend indicator, we see the edge that's perfectly lined here, and also that's like oh yeah in there. Yeah, yeah, because that's a that's a. Uh, product of two bends there yes and it looks like one part really or one one surface mm -hmm. um oh yeah about the offline software because yeah um we already programmed it offline using a yeah. um by importing the 3d models after your after the offer bends its first prototype part we, we can confirm the angle is good thanks to the bi and he can also come here to see if the final shape looks same. Oh yeah, sure. And also he can dimension it. Yeah. So now, now oh, from boy. here, yeah. he can make sure the thing's height or the thing's size is under tolerances. Yeah. Okay. And, and really, out of that whole bending procedure, you know, the two and a half minutes that the setup took plus the bend time, mm -hmm. It was only a percentage, really, that those uh, BIS sensors were doing their work. So you could actually run jobs that way if you don't have, you know, 10,000 exactly. of those. Yes, so um, the BI. So once it's um, adjust, make an adjustment on the first part, yeah. but you, the adjustment will be saved. So what you can do is you can have the BI active every 10 parts or every, every 20 parts. You can identify when to come to have the bi oh, come so out to maybe do, do like a sampling almost mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so if the skit can cut maybe like 50 of these yeah we can have every 50 part we can activate the bi automatically so okay. every time the skit changes maybe the thickness might change the material yeah. itself will change so okay you can have the bi uh, make an adjustment for the new skit and have the same part for for that one yes. okay good thank you mm -hmm. And once I'm done, yeah. let's say this was my final job, then what okay. the operator can do is he can come to his... He can choose his home layout to clean up the bed, which will take a minute and 12 seconds. Okay, to re uh, reverse this? Yes. Yeah, okay. It's to make the bed clean. That alarm is just telling us, hey, your uh, your tooling is being changed by the ATC right now? Yes, right now. Okay. ATC running. Yep. So the only time the ATC will stop doing its job is when I purposely... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, Lift it up. Yeah. Uh, uh, but other than that, um, there is a cover, so there's no way the operator can interfere with the tool changes. Okay. And it's going to clean up the tools. Oh, 
That was a quick job. Yes, it was actually one minute and nine seconds, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> We're beating records here today. <laughs> okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right, so then uh, now we'll, uh, we'll go on to that third job. Okay. okay, yes. Okay.